Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to know that Jesus Christ can hold us up. That regardless of how heavy it looks, regardless of how the oppression feels, regardless of how weak we done got, regardless of how disturbed or spin around we are, regardless of how much is on us, that Jesus Christ can hold us up. That when we are weak, he is strong. What a powerful, powerful revelation that is. Praise ye the Lord. And we want to welcome you all here with us at the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two, going through the Bible in 10. A 10 minute devotional that goes line by line, verse by verse, through the Word of God to edify to encourage, inspire the covenant seekers, the covenant keepers, the Ark of the Covenant ministry family, for those that seeking the Lord Christ Jesus, for the body of Christ, to and give us some substance in a time of weakness, to give us substance in a time of spiritual warfare, backbiting and lying and stealing, through in the times of sicknesses and overwhelming stress, through in the times of confusion, through in the times of being knocked down or sitting on the hilltop or walking through the valley of the shadow of death, through the times of being lost, alone, abandoned, through the times that we can't even hear God, we want you to know that God is giving substance unto his word. And we are so grateful to be in this ministry. And we are asking for you to help us in this ministry by sharing the videos. Share, share, share the videos with your family, your friends, your loved ones, those that you're praying for, those that you're witnessing to, your neighbors, those that's in your church family, those that's in your small group. Share the videos with those that you work with, those that's in hospitals, jails, those that's going through different heartaches and pain. Share them with those that's in nursing homes, residential care, independent living. Share, share, share the videos with those that's in college, those that's in the armed forces. Share, share, share them with your family, your friends, your loved ones, even your enemies. Share them. And we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K, of O L the T H E ministry. I mean covenant C O V E N A N T ministry M I N I S T R Y the number two and we and you'll see our symbol right here that says being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And we want you to go through our videos, all the different types of videos there, Bible studies, mental and physical exercise, go through our Sunday morning worship, the different series that we've been teaching on. Listen, our, even our Covenant Seekers Detective game, go through there, leave us a comment, let us know which ones you like, which ones you don't like by giving us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let us know which ones you want us to bring back. Like if, even if you want us to bring back our Covenant Seekers Detective game, let us know. Also, subscribe Hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is uploaded. And to all of our podcast friends, listen, we are on Spotify Podcast. At the Ark of the Covenant Ministry, you'll see our symbol. We have a whole lot of stuff on there. Some stuff you haven't heard on here, but it's on there. Have a whole lot of stuff on there. And there's a lot of the new stuff that is not on there. Because every time I try to upload something, it's, it just seems like it won't take I don't know if I didn't reach my limit of uploading, but maybe one of y'all can help me with that. Leave me a comment and let me know what I need to be doing. All right? We're on Spotify. Pop
podcast. All right. Okay, then. Well, let's get ready and get and get relaxed and get our Bibles. And we want to welcome you to the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two. Going through the Bible in 10. Genesis chapter 6, verse 21. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. You shall take for you food, and you shall gather them all up, and it shall be for food for you and them. What a powerful, powerful, powerful verse. Well, we want to let you know we're going to spend three minutes on interpretation, three minutes on revelation, three minutes on application, and one minute to wrap it all up. This is a powerful, powerful verse here. As the Lord is still speaking to Noah, and he is describing a powerful scene here, he tells Noah that I want you to also go gather food. I want you to gather this food. Food, and I want you to look at this food as it's being food for you and for them. He's talking about for him and his family that, he, that God has told him that was going to come in the ark as well as for the animals that is going to come into the ark. He wants him to gather food, that there's going to be enough space for you to put the food in there. There's going to be an area for you to have food and where you can store up enough food for you and these animals. And we want you to get all types of food for all types of animals. We we want you to get this food. God said, I want you to get this food and, and it's for you to eat as well. So get the food that you can eat. Get the food that you like. Get the food that is pleasing to your palate. Get the food that is going to be nutritious to your body. Get the food. Get it and bring it in into the ark, into the holy sanctuary. Bring it in. Bring it in. Bring it all in. What a powerful thing. See, God is letting Noah know that, listen, I know I set this task before you, but I'm going to, I got provisions to sustain you as well. I got provisions to hold you up as well. I got provisions to carry you through this particular situation and circumstance that I'm calling you unto. I've got the provision that I want you to go and gather for you to go through what it has to be going through. See, I, I've created the space for you to put this food. I created an area for you to store this food. I created a uh, understanding of about the food. See, I know you don't know what all of them eat. I know you don't know where all of them eat. I know you don't know how all of them to eat. But I'm here to tell you, I'm going to show you and give you the wisdom from above that you would know exactly what food to get, exactly what type of food each one of them eat, exactly how they eat and when they eat. I'm going to give you this knowledge and I want you to go and use this knowledge and gather the food. What a powerful thing for you and I to understand that God is telling us that we need to be have substance, that we need to have food we that we need to be sustained and God is able to sustain us through the provisions that he will provide that that if we go and gather it it will be enough through every situation, through every circumstance, through every understanding that he has provision that he shall provide. What a powerful, powerful thing. And that's a powerful thing. As we begin to peel back the layers of the spiritual revelation to this verse, the Bible is telling us that 6 represents man and 21 represents the growing of faith, the growing in Christ Jesus. And he is telling us that man will grow by faith by food. 
by the feeding. In other words, by the hearing of the word of God shall we grow in faith. And the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. Need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible is telling us that if we take in the spiritual food. In other words, you're asking what spiritual food? The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 89 verse number 11 that God that everything belongs to God all the heavens and all the earth but it, when you get down to verse 14 it tells us that God's throne is held up by two pillars God's throne is held up by righteousness and justice in other words God is telling us that he is going to exalt his word above his name. And you're going to have to apply his word. His righteousness is his word. His righteousness is his truth. His righteousness is his guidance for you and I. His righteousness is the standard. His righteousness is what we should be seeking. And we do that by learning about God. That we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the man Christ Jesus. We grow in learning about Christ Jesus. We grow in feeding our souls with Christ Jesus. We go grow through the understanding and the revelation of God's word. So when we feed on his righteousness, when we feed on who he is, on his holiness, as we feed on his word, then we can grow in the knowledge or the wisdom of God by the way of application, which is his justice, his righteous justice, justice. If we begin to apply the word of God. When we begin to do what God's words say righteously, when we begin to take God's word and do as God tells us to do in the right manner, in the right way, in the right understanding, in the right position, that we do it in justice. We do it to uh, amplify God Almighty. We do it to bring forth God Almighty. We do it to tear down the works of the adversary. We do it for God himself. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 7 and 8 that if we will stand on the righteousness and justice of God, God will draw nay unto us. It's his righteousness and his justice that we need to stand on, that we need to feed on, that we need to gather together. We need to get around the word of God. We need to study the word of God. We need to hear the word of God. We need to apply the word of God. We need to show the word of God. We need to speak the word of God. We need to think by way of the word of God. We need to let God's word be our life, to be our feeding, to be our source of nutrition, to be our strength, the word of God. As, as we go applying this in our lives, watch what the word of God does for us. What a powerful thing. And how do we apply this on a day-to-day -day basis? Because some days we don't feel like reading that word of God. Some days we don't feel like hearing about the word of God. Sometimes we can be in situations and circumstances that the word of God don't even seem like it's real to us. It don't even seem like it's working for us. Sometimes we can be under so much oppression, so much depression, so much subject for the enemy's attack that we can be so confused that we can be pulled away from even thinking about God, that we are going through so much. How can we apply such a thing? See, the Bible tells us that we have to be disciplined, that we have to be able to remember who God is and, and what God is and how God is in our life. And we start this by having a steady diet. In other words, we started with a steady 
schedule. We started with a steady diet of the Word of God. See, regardless of how we feel, regardless of what we think, and regardless of the situation and circumstances, we have to have a steady diet of the Word of God. So we need to have certain set times where we get into the Word of God. And regardless of the situation or circumstance, we're going to get into that Word of God at that time. We're going to dedicate that time to God. And we're going to be disciplined to seek God at that time. Sometimes some people do it early in the morning. Sometimes some people do it in the afternoon. Sometimes some people do it at their bedtime. They got their own special time. Sometimes they do it on their lunch hour as well. They do it at all times. Sometimes they do it while they're driving in their cars on their way to and fro. But whatever that time is, you need to dedicate that time unto the Lord so God can speak to you, so God can release unto you the nutrition that you need to go through, to take that very next step, to look and see the hand of the Lord in every situation and circumstance. See, we need to be dedicated and disciplined to the Word of God. We need to be trained by the Word of God. We need to be strengthened by the Word of God. And we start off by receiving the Word of God and then applying the Word of God. Listen, all man needs to have a, the substance of the Word of God, to grow in the Word of God, to grow in grace and the knowledge of the man Christ Jesus. What a powerful thing. Maybe it's someone here today that's been struggling. Maybe it's someone here under the sound of my voice that has turned away from God because of different situations and circumstances. Maybe it's somebody here that has blamed God because of the different circumstances and situations. And it caused us to be pulled away from the man Christ Jesus. Maybe there's someone here that's been going through so much, that's been going through different turmoils and different situations and circumstances that they didn't even see God, that they don't even believe. But you feel the tugging at your heart. You feel God calling you and telling you to come home. You feel God whispering to you, telling you that I'm here. Come unto me. And you ask how to do this. The Bible tells us if we turn from our ways and turn to the ways of the man Christ Jesus, if we repent, if we take it by faith, faith that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. If we take it by faith that Jesus Christ lived on this earth, if we take it by faith and believe that he went to the cross for not only your sins but my sins as well, that we all were like sheep led astray, that we all came short of the glory of God, that we all have sinned against God Almighty himself, that Jesus Christ went to the cross for our sins, that he took our punishment, that he was trust, he was beaten for our trespasses, that he took the penalty of our sins, that he was spit upon, that the crown of thorns was mashed upon his head, that he was beaten, that he was unrecognizable as a man. He took this punishment for your sins and for my sins because there was a penalty to sin. There was a wrath of God for sin, that God at the end that we was going to receive death, and death being the separation from God Almighty, death being not only a physical death, but a spiritual death as well, as we will be cast into hell, we will be cast into torment, we will be cast into the lake of fire, we will be cast with burning upon us, Lord, as we heard the rich man cry out unto Lazarus, unto Father Abraham, have Lazarus dip him his finger in some cool water to touch my scorching tongue, that we was be cast into turmoil and and burning and being be tormented forever and ever and ever and ever for eternity. That Jesus Christ paid the penalty, that Jesus Christ 
stood in between us and God's wrath, that he became that perfect sacrifice. And he died upon that cross. And they took him and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. And he stayed there for three days. And early Sunday morning, he rose again. He rose over death, hell, and the grave. He rose over victory over the world. He rose with all power given unto him on, in heaven and on earth. That God highly exhorted him and gave him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He rose. And the Bible says that he ascended on high. And sit it at the right hand of the Father. And he's making prayers for you and I. He's waiting for his day to return triumphantly. Gathering his church without spot or blemish. Listen, all you got to do is take it by faith and believe it. Believe it in thy heart. And when you do that and turn from your ways and repent, the Bible said all you got to do is cry out unto the Lord. Lord, I am a sinner. And Lord, I know I have sinned against you. And Lord, right now, Lord, I'm crying out for forgiveness as I turn from my ways and turn unto you. Lord, I know you are the Savior, the Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Lord, forgive me. Save my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And then, listen, get you a Bible. If you don't have one and you can't afford one, listen, go to the nearest resale shop. Go to the nearest church. Knock on their door and ask them for a Bible. And then start reading and studying that Bible. And then I want you to find you a sin-hating Bible-preaching church. You say, well, I don't know one. Ask the Lord and let him lead you to the church where he wants you. And when you get there, I want you to make a public confession of your salvation by the way of baptism. And then begin to feed yourself with the righteousness of God. Begin to feed yourself by way of the word of God. Begin to feed yourself by the way of discipline and dedication to the word of God. And then begin to apply the word of God righteously. Begin to apply the word of God in every area of your life, in everything of your life, in every thought pattern of your life. Begin to apply the word of God. And watch God draw me unto you. What a powerful thing. Well, we want you all to know that we, we are here for you. We want you to share the videos. Share them with your family and friends. We want those that cried out today to put your name down and where you're from so we can add you to our prayer list. As you share the videos with your family and friends and loved ones and enemies, as you share the videos with those in your neighborhood, those you've been praying for, those that you know has backslidden, share the videos with those that's in school, those that's in the armed forces. Share, share, share the videos. And we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At the ARK, A-R-K, of, O-F, the, T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry. The number two, and you will see our symbol right here that says, Being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And we want you to go through our videos. Listen, go through there, all different types of videos, Bible study videos, series that we done taught, uh, even our Christmas songs are there. All type of videos are there. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let us know if you want us to teach on a particular series as well as listen also hit that 
notification bell so you know when the next video is uploaded as you subscribe and as you comment to us. We'll be so forever grateful unto you. And remember that we praying for you as we pray for ourselves. We praying for your situation and circumstance as we pray for our situation and circumstance. We praying for our government. We praying for those that's at war. We praying for those that's in war-torn areas, those in disastrous situations. We praying for Israel, Egypt. We praying for Afghanistan, Sudan, Africa. We praying for our school system. We praying for our government. We praying for those that's first responders. We praying for those that's in our armed forces. We praying for our children that's in detention centers, that's in group homes, our children that's in children's homes and in foster care systems. We praying for those that's in housing situations from the palace to sleeping on the park benches. We are praying for those that's in missions and that's in halfway houses. We are praying for those that's going into different type of housing situations from prisons, from jails, from institutions. We're praying for transitional housing, halfway houses. As we praying for those in adult daycare, we're praying for those that's in nursing homes, residential care facilities, independent living. We're praying for all the entire land as we pray for all types of situations and circumstances, those that's dealing with abortion, those that's dealing with suicide addictions, those that's dealing with spiritual attacks, those that's confused, those that's weak and lacking, those that's on a bed of affliction. We praying for all situations and circumstances as we take it to the throne of grace. Father God, we are so grateful. And we are so thankful, Lord, for your precious blood. We thankful, Lord, for your obedience even unto the death of the cross. Lord, we are so grateful, Lord, that you are risen, Lord. We are grateful, Father God, for the sweet name of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, as we come to the throne of grace, Lord, we come humbly, Lord, but boldly. Lord, we come in seeking and lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to release our burdens, Lord. We come, Lord, to let go that which has been bound in unto us, Lord. We come, Lord, for the tearing down of strongholds, for the breaking of shackles, Lord, for the destroying the works of the adversary. Lord, we come for freedom and overcoming and victory in the name of Christ Jesus. Lord, we come for the shaping and molding of Jesus Christ, for the teaching of and the learning of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come for direction and understanding, Lord. We come for healing, Lord. We come for thanksgiving, Lord. And Lord, we come to cry out the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we pray that you be glorified and magnified. Lord, we pray for your resurrection power. Lord, we pray that you breathe over the situation and circumstance, Lord, as we hold on to your unchanging hands. And Father God, we so thankful. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. For glory to God, we so grateful and so thankful. And we want you to remember that Jesus loves you. And so do we. Bye-bye now.